Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Khalid, it's an honor to be with you here this evening. Allah yubarak fikum. Allah yubarak fikum. So, first of all, I would like to thank you, Dr. Post, for your time and your effort calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, teaching and your charitable efforts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, yizidik bi khair, you know. Allah yubarak. So, uh, so for the audience, Sheikh, uh, can you introduce yourself a bit about your background and studies? and then the activities at Islamic Ministries and Community Development. Inshallah, I'd be honored, uh, Dr. Khalid. First of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting me this evening. This is a, uh, a blessed occasion that I can be here with you this evening. Um, unfortunately, we can't be together in person, but hopefully, inshallah, we can do that soon. Inshallah. Um, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with accepting Islam in 2002 after the events of September 11th. And you know, prior to that, I was enrolled in a community college in Manchester, Connecticut. And I had a lot of time to study and reflect and ponder over many different things. Um, at that time, I was very interested in philosophy, very interested in studying the different religions, mm -hmm. Um, I delved a lot into Freemasonry, wow. uh, um, the occult studies, um, a lot of different things, you know, and, you know, I think the events of September 11th, that's what actually spurred me to delve further into studying more about Islam, because I knew, you know, or I had, you know, I had, um, you know, I had very strong beliefs that, you know, um, the Muslims really had nothing to do with the events of September 11th. That was even before I was, I was Muslim. Mm. And I never heard anything about Islam in my life September. before September 11th. Didn't pay any attention. You know, there probably were a lot of Muslims in my, in my neighborhood, in my community, but you know, didn't really pay any much attention or really care, you know? Mm. Um, I'm not going to talk about the, the Ayyam al Jahiliyyah because okay. that'll, that'll be another series, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, inshallah. Yeah. But um, Alhamdulillah, Allah blessed me to accept Islam in 2002. Mm. And immediately I started going to the masjid. I mean, mm. that, was, that was the place where you could always find me. If anybody was looking for me, it was at the masjid. And, you know, I was blessed to meet a couple brothers who were upon the dawah, mm. Alhamdulillah, from the beginning. Imagine, you know, a new shahada coming into the deen, the mm. brothers the masjid studying usul sunnah wow. studying al ahkam having telelinks with scholars from India and Pakistan. Mm. Mm. So, alhamdulillah, there was about five of us in the masjid there in Connecticut. And, you know, alhamdulillah, we were always uh, you know, getting together, going out to eat together. You really felt, I really felt as a part of something. Mm. You know, felt as a as a brother, I, I'm an only child, so I didn't mm. really know how it is to have siblings, but subhanAllah, that warmth mm. and that um, closeness I felt with those first, uh, that first click of brothers that I met in the Masjid mm. in Connecticut was, was amazing. And subhanAllah, they actually encouraged me to start seeking knowledge and study and things like that. So it was from then, from 2002, where I just started reading everything about Islam, started memorizing Quran. I didn't even know Arabic. Sure. I was, you know, listen to Muhammad Ayyub and read the transliteration and just memorize, subhanAllah. Like like um, and then in the year 2004, Alhamdulillah, uh, me and two other brothers, a Pakistani brother and a Jordanian brother, mm. we actually took a trip for Umrah. And me, I had the intention of making Hijrah. Because, you know, I was reading Surah Thalatha and, yeah. you know, you have to leave the lands of the, of the disbelievers and you yeah. can't stay there. So I was like, you know, the beginning, I was uh, yeah. eager and enthusiastic to practice everything. Allah. So I was like, Khalas, I'm going for mm. Umrah, we're going to make Hijra. Mm. But we wanted to apply at the Islamic universities at the same time. So we ended up staying for about a month. 
alhamdulillah, we applied to Jam Islamiyah, Jamatul Muqura, mm. and, um, you know, our money ran out. So then, you know, at the end of the month, we figured, uh, yeah, we can't make Hijra. <laughs> I'm not going to make that easy, you know? Like so we it. ended up going back to America. Mm. But, you know, when we first went to Saudi Arabia, you know, it was a surprise. You know, me being uh, on, only in Islam after two years, except mm. in Islam, and I'm expecting, you know, to see the Sahaba, in Mecca, everybody with beards, everybody yeah. with thobes, all yeah. the women wearing black. And when we first got there, I was like, you know, surprised. I was like, wow. You know, it was a wake up call for me. So, subhanAllah, I came back to America after that month, after applying to Umu Qura and Jam Islamiyah. And, you know, after about probably, I think, five or six months, I received an acceptance letter. Mm. I think that 2005, I believe, beginning of 2005. And then, subhanAllah, I, uh, all three of us actually got accepted. And that was, subhanAllah, that was strange, man. Wow. You know, it was like wow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted uh, good for us. Yes. You, know? Who would, you, know, you know how rare it is to be accepted in Jam Islamiyah or uh, yeah. Jamatul Muqura. And yeah. all three of us applied and all three of us got accepted. Two of us mm. went to study. One of us uh, wasn't able. Mm. Uh, one went to Medina. I went to, to Mecca. So. Mm. Uh, you know, upon so you know, when, once you get the acceptance letter, you have to prepare yourself for you know traveling, and then you have to go to the embassy to get your visa, do your checkup, get all your paperwork, and things like that. So, um, I remember one day I was on the job, mm. and um, my mother called me, and for, so, so that's another whole story. Um, yeah. So you know, from the time of 2002 until then, I was always trying to give my mother dawah. Um, I would leave little pamphlets here, leave little cassettes on the dinner table. Yeah. You know, um, and she actually, you know, witnessed the change in me, the change in my behavior, the change right. in my demeanor and character. But she wasn't ready to accept the sum because, you know, the the thing, the, the only thing that was on the the news or, uh, you know, on the TV was Osama bin Laden, he's a terrorist, Muslims are terrorists, and things yeah. like this. And I yeah. constantly refute that and mm. say, look, Muslims aren't terrorists before I could even yeah. get her to talk about, you know, who is the creator, why is it important that we worship him, and things like that. So once I received that acceptance letter, um, you know, I started the procedures to get my visa and everything like that. And I remember one day I was going out to leave to go to the masjid. Mm. And my mother, she asked me, she's like, where are you going? I was like, mom, I'm going to the mosque. I'll be back uh, a little later. So she was like, I finally believe in that message that you wrote on the refrigerator. Because wow. what I did, I put a piece of paper on the refrigerator. I says, you know, uh, mom, you gotta think about, you know, this and the meaning of this. That, uh, the shahada, shadu la ilaha wa shadu Rasulullah, that is not the son of uh, the son of Allah because we grew up as Catholics and things like okay. that you know um, so subhanAllah she uh, when I was leaving out she said I, I actually believe in that message I believe in that thing you run on the fridge so I was like are you serious she's like yeah I was like you don't believe Jesus is the son of God she's like no I was like okay so I went to the mosque and I met with a brother his wife teaches at the at the, at the mosque mm. um so I told, I told him, I was like, look, if, if you can, I have to leave, mm. you know, a couple of weeks, my visa, I'm getting ready to get my plane ticket. I need you to follow up with my mother. I need your yeah. wife. So from that time, subhanAllah, um, you know, they built a relationship and, and my, she got invited to the mosque and they had, you know, introduction to Islam classes. And then mm. subhanAllah, mm. after some time, uh, after I went to Saudi Arabia and traveled during Hajj, subhanAllah, it was during the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Okay. And I remember walking through the, uh, one of the marketplaces, Suq Ali, they used to mm. call it, before mm. the uh, graveyard, Maqbara Ma'ala. Mm. And I was going to get, I think, kufis and things like that. And I got a call from a brother. It was a brother in Connecticut from Riyadh, mm. who I you know, came to know mm. while I was in Connecticut. He called me, and his English wasn't too good. Mm. Uh, he was like yeah, your mother uh, was at the mosque today and things like that and I was like I can't understand you send me a text yeah. so he sent me a text he says your mother announced her shahada in the masjid today Allah so I was like Allah I made 
uh, subdued the shuka right th right in the on the ground on the on the pavement. Actually. Yeah, I'm so happy. And then it was like overwhelming. I started crying, and it was like I was like, if I die right now, I mm. think I I you know fulfilled my obligation yeah. with my mother. You know, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. And um, you know, so that was the beginning of the Mahad al -Lugha. You know, that was when I was in the Mahad. So I was. You know, Allah, Allah subhanAllah, I knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose me. Allah chose to guide me. Alhamdulillah, he guided me to the manhaj, alhamdulillah. And Allah wanted good for me because he gave me the opportunity to be able to study in the, 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 the mahbat al-wahi, you know, the place where the original revelation yes. was there. Learn the real Islam from the scholars. So in 2005, I, you know, I was enrolled in the mahad al lugha And my days, you know, I would be... SubhanAllah, you know, we would go to the Mahal al wake up at 7, go to the Mat'am al mm. Mat'am al you know that, right? Never seen. Right. You go, get your breakfast, and then go to the, start your class at 8. So from 8 to 2, you know, we were in the Arabic Language Institute. Mm. Then two, we go back to the second of the lab, relax for a little bit, eat lunch, maybe take a little nap until Asr. Then from Asr until Isha every day, I would go to the Haram. From Asr until Maghrib, Basically, every day I would sit with Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab al Banna. Allahu Akbar. Rahimahullah. Rahimahullah. You know why we used to sit with him? Because he would speak to us in English. <laughs> he can speak Allah He Allah saw us and he was like, You guys are from America. SubhanAllah. We were like, Yeah, Sheikh. And, you know, our Arabic was weak at that time. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, SubhanAllah, we always used to see the Sheikh, you know, SubhanAllah. He was always passing out tea to everybody who came by. You Allah know, Allah everybody Allah. who came to the mosque, he was giving them tea. So he would sit between Maghrib and Isha every day, yeah. reading Quran. Allah so he would sit next to him. And this is where we started learning. Because, you know, mm. uh, I believe it was uh, the mother of uh, Imam Malik ibn Anas, mm. if I'm correct, where she said that she told him to go learn from the manners of the scholars before mm, he could yes. go learn from their knowledge. No. So that is where I learned subhanAllah, many of my manners, mm. many of my etiquettes, many of the behaviors, how to deal with the ignorant person, how to deal with the student, how to deal with the other sheikh, how mm. to deal with, you know, uh, different questioners, you know, right. you learn a lot of observation. So we would spend our time from Asr until Maghrib with Sheikh mm. Muhammad al banna Allah Just sitting and observing, you know, mm. drinking tea and Subhanallah. reading Quran and trying to learn Arabic and things like that. Allah. So then he, he would tell us, he's like, you know, um, you guys, you know, there's a there's a sheikh here in the haram. You guys need to go sit with him. I was like, sheikh, I'm in the beginning. I can't understand Arabic. He's mm. like, go. You have to go. You have to get your ears used to listening to Arabic. Mm. So he was go to sit with sheikh. We'll see Allah Abbas. He's an Indian Allah. scholar. He's yeah. been teaching in the haram for years. You need to mm. go benefit from him. He's from Ahl Hadith and things like that. Okay. So we're like, okay, Sheikh. Mm. So he would go and oh, that was so from the beginning of the time that I basically got to uh, Saudi Arabia, Alhamdulillah, I would sit with uh, those two, uh, Sheikh Sheikh Muhammad Benna and Sheikh uh, Wasi Allah Abbas. So Alhamdulillah, I finished. The, uh, the Arabic Language Institute in 2007. Alhamdulillah, I graduated uh, with MTS. Alhamdulillah. Then I moved on to uh, my bachelor's degree in the College of Kulit al Dawa Suluddin, Qism al Kitab al Sunnah. So that, um, that college basically teaches you the fundamentals of the deen. They have different, ca different uh, departments and things like mm. that. So I chose the department of uh, Quran and Sunnah. Basically, we study tafsir, ulum al Quran. Mm. Uh, you know, we memorize, uh, I think we memorized seven Jews, I believe, mm. seven Jews, eight Jews, actually, eight mm. Jews in the, in the uh, four years, okay. one Jew a semester. And then we study Hadith and Mustala Hadith. So basically, you know, Quran and Sunnah. That was yeah. Then I graduated from there, graduated from Qism uh, Kitab Sunnah in the year 2000. And 11, 2011, mm. also with MTS, alhamdulillah. Allah um, So then I applied for my master's degree. Mm. My, my master's degree, and I was uh, one of the very few students, I believe, at that time 
in Mokoro who actually, there was me and uh, one other brother, Jibril. You know mm. brother Jibril, right? I, I, I can't, I knew a few brothers He's in from- California now. He's in California now. Okay. California now. He was also, I believe he entered into the master's degree too, but also brother Musa. Mm. Brother Musa Richardson, he was in his master's degree before I entered my master's degree. Okay. But unfortunately, uh, I don't believe Brother Musa got uh, the opportunity to finish mm -hmm. his master's degree. So, right. I, I finished my master's degree in uh, 2015. Mashallah. So, I actually specialized in hadith. Mm. It's kind of hadith from the, the beginning of my acceptance of Islam. I've always had a love for hadith and mm. reading hadith and the narrations and yes. the chains of narration and biographers and like the of the hadith and um, you know I just had a love for hadith uh, mm. specifically you know Sahih Bukhari and uh, right. Jami'a Tirmidhi mm. um, you know it's like a bahar you know what I mean like, yeah, right, you know we have many sciences you know we have qiraat mm. with the different uh, you know modes of recitation and yeah. you know and you have usul and you have fiqh and and one of the things that actually, you know, directed me to, after I graduated the Mahat, to going into studying the Quran and the Sunnah was, mm. you know, brothers were like, oh, you should go to Sharia. Mm. You need to study fiqh because when you go back to America, everybody asks about fiqh. Right. And things like that. And I was like, I know fiqh is important. Yeah. But I want to study Qala Allah, Qala Absur. With all my due respect to Yes. The Im uh, Imam Ahmad, Imam Shafi'i, Imam yeah. Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Sufyan al-Tawri, and all the yeah. Awzai, and all the Fuqaha. I want to spend that four years memorizing hadith and learning hadith. Uh. Then, inshallah, we'll learn the aqwal of the, of the Fuqaha and the scholars yeah. of jurisprudence, inshallah. Um, so that was what like pushed me. And also, Shaykh will see Allah. Constantly sitting with Shaykh will see Allah mm. increased my love for, for hadith and learning about biographers, yeah. narrators, and things like that. And also, mm -hmm. Sheikh Muhammad Ali Adam in Ethiopia. Allahu Akbar. Allah. Yeah. So, basically, those two shiuk were the ones that I spent probably eight, eight to ten years with, constantly, mm -hmm. to all their, basically all the durus, except when I had uh, entered master's degree. When I entered master's degree, it was off and on, you know, because mm -hmm. I was busy with the research and things right. like that. So, the topic of my thesis and master's degree, it was actually a verification of an Arabic manuscript called al mafatih fi Hal al-Masabih. Mm. It was an explanation of Masabih Sunnah. You know who Masabih Sunnah is for Imam al-Baghwi. Mm -hmm. al it was actually a uh, kind of like a summary of uh, Sharh Sunnah. Uh -huh. okay. So this, the author of this was uh, Muhammad ibn Mudhafar al-Din al-Khalqali. Mm. He's from Azerbaijan. Uh -huh. He died in 745. He was wow. one of the Shafi scholars. He did incline a little bit to the Ash'ari Madhab mm. in uh, Sifat and things like that. So, of course, alhamdulillah, we, uh, one of the things that you have to do when you do tahqiq and you do verification is you have to do mm. ta'liq. Mm. So you have to rebut. Allah. You know, you have to rebut, uh, you know, any type of issues with aqidah, any issues mm. in fiqh, any issues of in hadith and things like that. So, alhamdulillah, yeah. that's what actually, um, you know, encouraged me to strive further into uh you know studying hadith and you know mm. look at manuscripts and you know subhanallah it, it's a it's a blessing when you um you know for somebody who has never looked at an old ancient arabic manuscript and then look at the book in its printed form mm. from that manuscript Akhi, you don't have any appreciation or value of the muhaqiqin or, or taqdeer of the ulama akhi, to see the juhd that they go through yeah. to make a book come out yeah. in you know printed form like this yeah. from an uh, Arabic manuscript that mm. you know, has no tashkil, no yeah. fatha, no dhamma, no kasra yeah. on the letters, right. you no know, discrepancies in the different manuscripts mm. and things like that. So that was actually that was a blessing. I think that was a blessing for, for the audience. Uh, what, what would you say, uh, tahkik? How, how would you describe a tahkik, making tahkik? Well, alhamdulillah, I mean, how would you describe the experience or? No, I, well, how would you describe, I mean, the, to the explain process? to those who, who are familiar with the terminologies and stuff like this and, and this process. I mean, you so kind of kind of did, but yeah. Uh, the process, I, I would, I guess you call it a verification of a manuscript okay. or okay, yeah, printing yeah, manuscript yeah. like yeah. that. 
actually use. Uh, but basically, what you do, you have the different, you know, manuscripts. Yeah. You have different copies of a manuscript. So, for example, let's say, you know, you're my sheikh and I'm your student. Well, mm. I mean, that's not an example. You are my yeah. sheikh. Yeah, uh, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm your student. So uh, let's say five students here, mm. and we're all writing down what you're saying this evening. Yeah. So. I'm writing something in my notebook. The student next to me is writing something in his notebook. The other student is writing. Maybe the other student, the third student, he had to go to use to answer the call of nature. Mm. So he made some of the things that you said. So he put down his notebook and then he came back. Mm. So then, you know, as, as time goes by, the students, they sit and they, you know, sometimes they take notes from each other. Mm. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they have to go and leave. So then, you know, and these are the like, basically an idea of what the manuscripts are. Mm. So then when you do the verification, you want to grab the different copies. So now we have three copies of the manuscript, my copy, the one next to me, and the other one over there mm. who left. Yeah. So now when we compare them, I say, well, okay, manuscript A from Farouk is the same as manuscript B from the student who was next to him. But it's different than manuscript C. Manuscript C it has some things which are missing. So then you mm. make note, okay, well, mm this hadith is missing or this statement from the Sheikh Khalid is missing. So you mm. take note, right? And you compare the differences in the manuscripts. And, you know, sometimes you find uh, things which are added on to one in one manuscript and taken out of another manuscript. So it's a very precise wow. uh, process and procedure. Then you have to actually figure out, you know, if you don't, if you're not good in Arabic, it's going to be very hard for you to read because a lot of the manuscripts before mm. the sixth century, mm. a lot of them aren't written with any tishkil on it. Mm. And probably the script itself might be a bit. Yeah. Some of them, you, you, you know, too. I mean, mm. sometimes a lot of the scholars, they wouldn't use nukat sometimes because mm. writing so fast. Right. They wouldn't put a, a, a nukta for the ba. Yes. Or wouldn't put a nukta for the noon. Mm. Or wouldn't put two nuktas for the ta. You just have to, yeah. by the siyak, you know, by yeah, the, yeah, the, the you yeah. have to figure out and know mm. what is, is being said, what yeah. is written. So, mm. uh, you know, it's very, um, you know, that's what actually, you know, increased my love and, and respect for books and, you know, mm. how and, you know, and now they actually have like whole groups, you know, they, you know, just like, for example, the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, mm. which, you know, depending on the printing, you know, one of the printings is like 50 volumes, uh, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, where I think uh, Sheikh Shu'ib al Arnaut, he was the head of the Lejna. Okay. Of the they had so you have a whole group, you have a whole yes. room of people of doing Allah verifying manuscripts and yeah. verifying the chains of narration so can i interject really deep. quickly one one quick thing because what's going on it's it's fantastic people like yourself who have this kind of knowledge because unfortunately a, a recent fitna that i've seen is there's a lot of youth who don't know arabic and stuff like this and they're making tashkik or causing doubt like for example shara sunnah imam barbahari you know there's a lot of kalam for people who probably never studied the book don't know arabic you know saying i heard this wasn't sound i heard it's the you know, so this knowledge is, is, is very... <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you this, Dr. Khalid, mm. you would be surprised at how many Arabic manuscripts there are in America. We mm. have, we're sitting on gold, literally, here in America. There's wow. shiuch from Mecca who actually are trying to get some manuscripts here in America. SubhanAllah. One, one of the, the shiuch that had, have, uh, had the opportunity to meet, Sheikh Uzair al-Shams. Mm. Um, he has done many, um, many uh, tahqiq of many books, specifically many of the compilations of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, Sheikh oh, al Qayyim al mm. And he mentioned to me on one occasion, he said there's, there's a, a, a juz, there's a part of the Majmu'a Fatawa wow. of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah in one of the libraries here in America. Princeton, Harvard, uh, University of Michigan, University of Chicago. So the manuscripts are all over. They're just waiting for people to extract them from the Zulamat mm. el like But unfortunately, many of us are focusing on other things yeah, and, uh, you know, being distracted where yeah. this is the real work of the Ummah. This is the, the revival of, 
You're yeah. talking about revive the sunnah. Mm, literally, you know, yeah. You can revive the sunnah, you know, do a miswak when you go to the five prayers. Yes. Revive the sunnah of, you know, uh, laying down on your right side after the two sunnah for the fajr prayer before you pray the obligatory fajr. What about reviving the books of the sunnah? The manuscripts of the sunnah. You know what I mean? That's a whole other study. I hate. I mean, I want to go back that's a whole other aspect. So <laughs> I don't want to get too too much, uh, you know, off yeah. track. We'll save that for another meeting. Um, yeah. So alhamdulillah, 2015, I did my dissertation. I finished. Okay. Alhamdulillah, I got a 95 on my uh, master's thesis. And in 2016, I was blessed to be accepted to the PhD program. Alhamdulillah, also in hadith. Mashallah. And um, so, alhamdulillah, from, so basically, uh, in 2015, that's when I came back to America. Mm. Okay, came to America. I, I had applied for the PhD program, but I came back to America to wait to see if I would be accepted or not. So once I got accepted, I went back to Saudi Arabia by myself. So my mm. family was with me in Saudi Arabia from 2005 to 2010. Okay. Uh, sorry, 2005 to 2015, mm. and then I sent them back in 2015 and came back by myself in 2016 to do the first year of studies in the PhD program, mm. and then, um, you know, then I came back. So basically, I've been working on my PhD. Uh, I finished, alhamdulillah, in, uh, July 4th, alhamdulillah, right. yeah. also uh, 95, alhamdulillah. Didn't Allah, you better, Allah, you better. Um, you know, unfortunately, Corona didn't allow us to uh, yeah. be there to do the dissertation, but we did it um, via the internet. Alhamdulillah. Okay. And, uh, it was an honor to have him as my supervisor for wow. the PhD. And uh, Sheikh uh, Dr. Ibrahim Noor Saif from okay. uh, Jamia Samia. He was one okay. of the Manakirin and Mashallah. also Dr. Ahmed Husseini as well. Mashallah. So uh, I finished uh, my PhD in July, alhamdulillah, this past July, also with a 95. But um, so in 2015, let me, let me backtrack now. 2015, when I came back to America, you know, I was always from the time I started studying every summer, I would come back to America. You know, I mm. do the summer thing, give the khutbahs in the local masjid in Connecticut, do the durus, mm. do the seminars on the weekend, plan conferences and things like that. Mm. Um, but you know the time was limited yeah. it was only three months and then you have to go back you know to, to start the school year so at that time you know I didn't really get really you know uh, I didn't into the the fabric of the community because I, I was only there you know part time I didn't really know yeah. the issue right uh, what was going on in the masajid what wasn't going on in the masajid what needed to be going on how there was a lack of dawah, things like that. So I didn't realize all of these things until when? Until 2015, when I actually came back, settled my family down for a little bit, and was waiting for my um, waiting for my acceptance of the PhD program. So at that time, um, subhanAllah, I, I was in Connecticut, and I stayed in Connecticut, I think for probably like six to seven months, you know, I was mm. working with one of the local massages, volunteering, yeah. okay. buzz, pray the five prayers and things like that. But one thing that I had realized was, you know, from the beginning, after like five or six months back, I was like, you know, many of our communities are, are sleeping. There's nothing going on, no activities. Mm. You know, there's the attendance to the lectures are low. Yeah. Uh, what are we doing for non-Muslims? There's mm -hmm. nothing going on. Right. What are we doing, you know, to just reach out to mm. them, mm. to reach out to them um, and let them know that we're here. Yeah. You know, that was like the beginning of Islamophobic era. Mm. Okay. Where everybody was scared and, you know, everybody, you know, Muhammad would change his name to Mo and Fatima changing her name to Francis. And, wow. <laughs> you know? So that's when I realized, that's Dr. Khalid, that's when I realized that I need to focus on dawah. Mm. The, the cause of all of these problems, the cause of the rise in Islamophobia, the mm. cause of fear, which is instilled in the Muslims, is because uh, the cause of um, our youth not having confidence and being bullied in school, mm. the cause of uh, non-Muslims having 
you know, hatred towards us and acting violently towards Muslim women and pulling off their hijabs and, you know, sl uh, slandering uh, Muslims and things like this is one thing. It's because mm. we're not giving dawah. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. And I said, giving dawah? Mm. I said, giving dawah, this is the solution for all of these problems. Giving dawah mm. to non Muslims is the wow. solution to all the problems. Wow. And of course, many of our brothers, many of our brothers, um, many of our, our brothers, our Salafi brothers, uh, they're giving their dawah, but unfortunately, many, much of the dawah doesn't go outside the masjid. Of course. I feel this. You know, it's, alhamdulillah, and that's good. That's, you know, a, a very important aspect of dawah. Yeah. But when we look at the dawah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how did the dawah spread from, you know, from Mecca to mm. Medina, mm. to Taif, to, to, to Sham, yeah. to, uh, to Furs, to Rome, to, mm. to Spain, to mm. China? To Africa, how did it spread? It didn't spread by just sitting in the masjid. The Prophet Muhammad is sitting in the masjid in Medina and reading Quran. No, yeah. he empowered people. Hey, mm -hmm. Mu'ad, mm -hmm. go to Yemen. You're going to yeah. meet the people of the book. Call them to yeah. La ilaha illallah. No. This uh, other companion, go, go here, go here. So I realized that the, the concept of da'wah that people had, it was like in the box. It was, mm -hmm. it was in the box. I said, we need yeah. to think out of the box. Yeah. You know? The concept of da'wah is not just giving khutbahs and giving durus and giving lectures and doing marriage counseling. No, the mm. concept of we need to get out there. The mm. people need to see us. Because wow. if those, that non-Muslim sees me out there, I'm wearing my thobe, I'm wearing my hat, you know, and I'm handing out food to the poor, this is going to dispel any misconceptions he has about mm. Islam, about ISIS or terrorism. And he's going to be like, wow, I saw this imam right here on the street. He lives right up the street from me, passing food to the poor and helping an old lady. Who do I believe? Do I believe what's on the media or do I believe my neighbor, this Muslim who's been here, you know, uh, giving me food and helping the poor for years. So that was actually the spark. That was the spark of the, the idea that we need to focus more on giving dawah to non-Muslims. So in 2016, I came to Hagerstown. Mm. I took a position uh, in one of the local mosques here uh, as a resident scholar. Mm. And okay. me, and I think this was like the beginning of the initiation of that position, you know, because mm. back in the day, you know, I never heard anything about resident scholars. Yeah, it was I a mom, until I... and that was it, you know? Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, you know, I went to the, and of course, as a student coming back, you have bills to pay, you have a family to take care of. I know that. And I was like, all right, well, let me, let me check it out. Yeah. Let me go down and visit check out the community. I like the community. Um, and, you know, one thing that was always in my mind, and I actually, you know, uh, asked the board, I was like, well, you guys already have an imam. Mm. Where are my roles and his roles going to yeah. overlap? And where are mm. they going to be, you know, complementary yeah. to each other? They were like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, we'll figure it out and mm. things like that and that. So I stayed there for a year. And, you know, um, dealing with the board of administration and the board members and things like that and the politics of the masjid and yeah. uh, the, the time that it takes to get anything done. You have a good idea and you know it needs to be done, but it needs to go through many uh, channels for it to mm -hmm. be approved. And then the, the idea eventually ends up evaporating into thin air and then nothing happens. Mm -hmm. So that's when I actually experienced firsthand politics of masjid yeah. and i didn't like it at all i said you know i said this needs to either i need to find something else because this isn't for me mm. you know, i wasn't um you know i wasn't a yes man yeah i was a peon yeah in, in in the in the days of ignorance yeah you know, before um, I'm not going to come into Islam and yeah. be like, you know, yes, sir, yeah. okay. And, yeah. You know, I'm not going to talk about Tawheed on the minbar. I'm not going to yeah. want some patients or shirk. Wow. You know, let's sing Kumbaya in the churches. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, that's not me, bro, you know? Yeah. So, um, so basically, I said, you know, that's, in, so at the end of 2016, you know, I had a meeting with the board members and I told them, 
you know, I think they were actually thinking about, you know, uh, letting me go anyways. But I, I think I think I coached them first. I says, look, yeah. I don't think this is going to work. And, you know, my advice is that you use that money that you had allocated for my salary to do something else for the community. Give the mm-hmm. imam a raise, yeah. build a fence around the masjid, expand the parking lot. But I think that that money that you have allocated for my salary is really a waste. And I'm telling you sincerely. Yeah. You know, because... I'm not worried about the money. Allah has gone to take mm. care of it. You know, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Allah is going to open the doors. So that's when, you know, I became acquainted to a, a local uh, brother here mm. who uh, is a businessman, entrepreneur. Mm. And you know, we were just, you know, talking and, you know, and same thing, you know, same complaints from the brother, you know, hey, he was sick of the politics of the masajid too and things like mm-hmm. that. He's like, listen, Farouk, you have a responsibility. He advised me, you know, he's like, you have a responsibility on your shoulders to give dawah. Mm. You need to give dawah. SubhanAllah. You need to find a venue where you're unrestricted to be able to give dawah with no strings attached. Yeah. And you can give the dawah of the Quran and Sunnah. Allah Akbar. And you can give people food, but not let them run away without anything about Islam. You have to give them food and you have to give them pamphlets and tell them about Islam. So yeah. that was actually the, the, you know, the conversation. Mm. And remember, I already had this in my mind in 2015 when I came back. Like, we have to give doubt and not we have to do something. So that was actually the, uh, I guess, the embryo, I guess, of uh, mm. the, the IMACD baby forming. Okay. You know, that conversation with one of the local brothers. So, uh, you know, so subhanAllah, you know, I sat down. I think for probably like two weeks, you know, contemplating, reflecting, looking at all the different Islamic organizations and what they're doing and what they're not doing mm. and what needs to be done and how I can fill in the gap. Because mm. I don't, you know, I don't want to, I guess, you know, I, I don't know if you call it like stepping on somebody else's shoes or duplicating the same okay. thing that somebody yeah. else is doing, yeah. things like that. But I was trying to fill fulfill you know fulfill the gap that yeah. other organizations and other people and other massages weren't doing mm. so one of the things that made me realize the importance of starting uh islamic ministries and community development was when i looked at the budgets in the masajid of dawah activities mm. Akhi, some masajid don't have anything allocated at all for dawah activities in washington i think it's very much like that yeah well, I was like, wow. Yeah. I was like, so this, this is where we can actually come in, complement what the community is doing. And at the same time, because many communities, they're, they may be, you know, afraid to work with somebody or afraid to put somebody on their payroll because they're worried about what he might say or they might bring harm to the message and things like this. Mm-hmm. But when you're a whole separate entity focused on Dawa, Absolutely then they have no liability, you know what I mean? With you, what you say or what you do is upon you, not upon them. Yeah. So I said, this is what we need to do. We need to form this organization, this nonprofit organization, 501c3. So the first thing that I did, alhamdulillah, after I had a plan down, Mashallah. Um, you know, I, I, I wrote down my kind of like a business plan, a business proposal. I said, you know, what are we going to do? We're going to, one of the first things we're going to do is establish a food pantry. But, not like the other Islamic food pantries. Mm. Not the once a month or, you know, once every six month food pantry where, you know, it's, you know, uh, announced everywhere and it's all on social media and then you never see the organization again. No, mm. we want a constant presence in the local communities. So one of the first things that we, that we did, we established a local food pantry, a, like a weekly food pantry. Because mm. in Hagerstown, Maryland, that's where we're based out of, Hagerstown, Maryland. Mm. It's in Western Maryland. It's, uh, I guess you can say, a low-income to medium-income uh, community. One of the lowest funded uh, educational, uh, you know. Districts. Part, yeah, yeah, district of, of okay. Maryland. Okay. Uh, so you can basically get an idea of, um, mm. you know. So I said, uh, so I looked at all the other organizations keep doing food pantries, and they're doing it once a month. Mm. churches there's no muslim food pantry we were the first one to establish a muslim food pantry in hagerstown 
No. And even though when I was at the other masjid, we had talked about it, but it never got done. So I was like, this is something we already agreed upon, but I'm going to take the initiative since you guys don't want to. I said, I'll do it under my, under the organization that we're going to start. Yeah. So we did it. But we made our food pantry weekly, not monthly. And mm. we accept anybody, anybody who comes in with an ID, with a food bank card, without a food bank card, whatever. We don't care. If you're, mm. you know, how can you deny somebody food? This is from right. the minhaj. Yeah. This is from the minhaj of the self Allah that Allah. many people don't know about. Subhanallah. Many people forget about or put mm. in the in the hamish. You know what I mean? <laughs> they put it on the side commentary. Yeah. 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 Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? He said, uh, none of you truly believes mm -hmm. if you fill your stomach and your neighbor's hungry. He didn't say Muslim neighbor, non-Muslim neighbor. Mm -hmm. If Think about it. If the Prophet said this hadith in Medina, who were living in Medina with him? They were Jews Yeah. in yeah. Medina. Yeah. So, I mean, your neighbor is Muslim or non-Muslim. Yeah. So, and you know, the many other hadith about feeding the poor and things like yeah. that. So, alhamdulillah. So that was one of the things, but I said, you know, we have to be different than the other organizations. I see all these other organizations, ICNA, ISNA, doing food drives and food hands out, but they just give the bags of food and yeah. they don't say anything to the people about Islam. They don't give them one pamphlet about who is the Lord, what is Islam, what is yeah. Iman and things like this. So I says, nah, we gotta, we gotta tweak it a little bit. Alhamdulillah, yeah. it's excellent. We're giving out food, yeah. but we have, to, we, have to, we have to build a relationship with the people. We have to spark their interest, spark mm. their curiosity. Mm. So what we do, alhamdulillah, you know, one of the, the, the projects that we have is, you know, we produce dawa materials as well. These are uh, some of them. I'll send you out some. One yeah, we have yeah, is sure. Uh, so he, these are for Muslims. So we have, we have uh, pamphlets for Muslims and non-Muslims. I don't have ones for non-Muslims now, but what we'll do, every bag of food we give out, mm. we place a pamphlet. Okay. The concept of God in Islam or who is Jesus mm. in Islam. To spark yeah. their then when they come back the next week mm. oh i have the pamphlet i'm interested can you tell me more that's when we open up the conversation that's when we start talking that's when we get to know them yeah because as we know the prophet muhammad وسلم, when he started his dawah even before he started his dawah what was he known as mm. in mecca Karab. Al -Amin. Okay. Yeah. Amin. he was mm -hmm. known to be trustworthy mm. even amongst all the people of Quraysh. Mm. you know mm. So that's one of the things that we try to establish here is to, number one, dispel the misconceptions, decrease the Islamophobia, and give us imams and, you know, people who are practicing Islam and apparently looking as Muslims a good reputation in the community, that we're doing good deeds. We're not hiding in the masjid or hiding behind the minbar or hiding giving gurus and things like that. So, mm. alhamdulillah, um, the food pantry is a success. Alhamdulillah, I think over two years, mm. we've fed approximately 3,200 people Alhamdulillah, yeah. different occasions. Yeah. Another thing mm -hmm. that um, actually started from the food pantry is we do a annual school bag giveaway. Mm -hmm. Before school starts, we give a school bag and all school supplies, pencils, paper, notebooks, erasers, everything to anybody wow. who comes to wow. the community. Last year, I think we had about 85 people come to get okay. uh, school bags. And also the mayor of Hagerstown participated and was wow. handing out wow. uh, handing out uh, school bags with us as well. Mm -hmm. So wow. that was that was like you know that's amazing that he yeah. have a mayor yeah. who's a Republican mm. who's a, a wow. Donald Trump supporter wow. come and sit next to you, and me and him were were actually you know we talk on a yeah. you know regularly. Yeah. yeah. So those are the type of of these are the type of things and network connections that we wanted to build in the local community. You yeah. know, not just the masjid. We need to take the da'wah outside of the masjid. So, alhamdulillah, we were able to establish the food pantry. And subhanAllah, after some time, I think in the beginning of 2019, okay. Allah has blessed us with um, to work with a company that prints all of our da'wah materials for free. Wow. Allah, you've got to seek them. So, and one of the conditions is that since we're getting them for free, we don't charge anything. So it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anybody, anywhere yeah. in America, yeah. we want to go internationally, inshallah, <laughs> but anyone, anybody in America, Muslim, non-Muslim, they request the Quran. Yeah. They request 
pamphlets about Islam, whether they're incarcerated, whether they're in a hospital, whether they're at their job, whether they're in a conference, they want pamphlets, Dawah pamphlets or free Qur'ans, we are able to supply them free of charge. We pay for the shipping, we pay for everything, alhamdulillah. Another one of the projects, Dr. Khalid, that yeah. we've been blessed to do is billboard. Our okay. billboard wow. here in Haiti. So we've placed up several billboards over the past two years. One, uh, the general, uh, what is Islam? Islam mm -hmm. is mercy, justice, the religion of one Lord, one creator, call, your no call this number, visit the website. So we also have a website online, and that's one of the important things when we give dawah. Yeah. When we give food to the people, we just don't want them to walk away. Mm -hmm. We want them, maybe they have that pamphlet, because Khalid, you know, if we save their body, mm. but we don't save their soul, yeah. or don't spark the curiosity to be mm. able to save their soul, it's like we're, we're, we're defeating the purpose, you know, because we know as Muslims, the hereafter is more important than this dunya. This dunya, mm. you're going to experience hardships. You're going to experience difficulty. You may be rich at one moment, poor at the other moment. Look at, you may be employed. Yeah. Look at us now. Many of us are not yeah. employed now with the COVID-19. Yeah. So, yeah. subhanAllah, but when you only cater to somebody's physical being, yeah and neglect their spiritual being. So this is a major, major um, fault that many uh, of the Dawah organizations have, many of the you know humanity organizations have and things yeah. like that. And mm. if you're caring for humanity, care about their soul as well. Don't just care for their body because the human being is mind, body, and soul, yeah. not just body. Yeah. You know? So Alhamdulillah, we tried to make our Dawah, you know, uh, in, you know well-rounded, you know, yeah. uh, comprising all three aspects of the human being, you know, the yeah. mind, the nourishment for the mind, body, and soul. So we got several calls, Dr. Khalid, yeah, you better for, uh, for the uh, for the billboards. People like I saw on the billboard, please wow. send me a Quran. Also, alhamdulillah, we've been blessed to have mobile Dawa wow. band. Allahu Akbar. Band. So anytime we go to deliver food, anytime we go to do deliveries mm. for the Dawa, Sometimes we'll go to Masajid, local Masajid, Baltimore, Hagerstown, Frederick, mm. um, Philadelphia. Sometimes we visited the uh, Imam Muslim Family Center. Okay, so mashallah. We set dawah tables over there, like passing that. food to the people, passing out dawah pamphlets. Nice. So we take the dawah with us, you know, on the road. We're on the highway. We get mm. beats on the car. Like, mashallah. You know, like so not, Muslim, not Muslims, wow. imagine. Wow. Not, That's beautiful and positive, yes. You know? Yeah. Um, so, that's, you know, alhamdulillah, all positive feedback from, from Muslims and non-Muslims. And you would think the opposite. Yeah. You know, you would think that in the atmosphere now, the Islamophobia is high, but we create the Islamophobia. Mm. I think we create the Islamophobia from not mixing with the people, from not being open, from not being a parent, showing yeah. ourselves as Muslims in the community, not, not being afraid. Mm not being afraid yeah. and you know that's where many of our communities have to you know because you know when we look at many of the masajid you know 50 60 years ago mm. the uncles you know the uncles the elders right right they were the pioneers you yeah know, they came there were no masajid mm. a lot of the masajid you know initially there were houses they paid yeah. the basement of the house and then it would be renovated and then it would be <laughs> and things like this so alhamdulillah i mean after allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and and them they have facilitated for us our generation a place to pray so now we don't have to worry about praying mm -hmm. i mean we don't have to worry about looking to build a masjid a place to pray we have the right. masajid right right but many of our uncles now they've reached an age where they can't go out and give dawah in the street they can't mix with the people they can't you know um you know, go to all these several meetings and, you know, pack, pack up food bags and things like that, depending on the energy, you know, mm. of, of many of them. But right. so it's upon us, our generation, to carry the torch, mm. you know, to carry the torch of light that they had established yeah. by building those massages. We have to carry the torch outside the massages now. Mm. Mm. So we don't credit them at all. You know what I mean? The, the elders, I mean, you know, we were, you know, many of us, probably wouldn't you know be in the dean without the masajid you yeah. know and learn 
yeah, something to the place. That it is, but it needs to be taken to a next level. You know? Absolutely, it's, it's, absolutely. And this is the, the level that our generation, I think, is responsible for. Yeah. Taking dawah to the streets, taking the dawah to the marketplace, That's taking the awesome. dawah to your place of work, yeah. taking dawah outside of prison, not just mm. being a Muslim in prison, yeah. you know, and wearing your kufi and praying, but then when you get back to the streets, you're out there slanging rocks. Yeah, right. No, right. The, the, the real test is not being a Muslim in prison. The real test is being a Muslim outside of prison. So yeah. that's why we're trying now to, you know, we've been getting a lot of requests from uh, a lot of our brothers who are incarcerated. We want yeah. to get that, 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 that clear, mm. uh, that, you know, that good uh, educational dawah, not based upon bigotry, not based upon partisanship. If yeah. there is partisanship or bigotry, we want to try to eliminate it. Yeah. We want to give there's a good background, you know, because, you know, our brothers who are incarcerated, that's another thing too that, um, you know, we have is the prison ministries as well. Okay, good. Um, so we, we send free materials to any brothers, any chaplains, if you know yeah. any chaplains, yep. materials and things like that, we'll send them free of charge. And we actually look forward yeah. to I mean, the family, you know, my family, my kids, they can involved as well. Allah you know, we'll back, we'll be putting in the, the brochures, the sunnah, yeah. bid'ah, okay. uh, what is Islam, yeah. you know, what is the we'll all be packing them in the boxes together. So they're always asking me, like, mm. when uh, the next request, so we can pack, pack the boxes up, Mash pack up. the envelopes up, you know. So that's a, a blessing, you know, as well. Um, also, we do conferences, so that's... Um, also, we do open houses. That's another thing that uh, I didn't mention. One of the okay. uh, projects that we have, too, is we, we assist Masajid in doing open houses. You know, the open mm. house yeah, yeah. type of uh, yeah, yeah. events where yeah. we do a little presentation about Islam and invite the whole community, Muslims, not yeah. muslims yeah. Christians, Jews, everybody. They come in, they see the mosque, they see us praying, they hear an introduction of Islam, then maybe we share a meal together and things like yeah. that. That's another activity that we do as well. Also, uh, you know, the media has come and interviewed us several times about our work they here are. in Haverstown. Um, and, you know, they're very supportive. You know, they tell us anytime you have an event or anything, let us know and we'll put it in the newspaper. We'll put well, it up. Like it. So these, you know, Dr. Khaled, these are the things where many of our brothers, alhamdulillah, are kind of neglecting. There's major khalil. Uh, we have to think yeah. of out the box. Yeah. We have to think outside the box. You know, focus on our dawah that we've been doing mm. in the masajid. Yeah. But don't neglect the dawah outside the masajid because if the more dawah is done outside the masajid, I believe that the better it will reflect on inside the masajid. I mean, mm. also, we've had just for the past two years, about 27 new shahadas come to uh, through the pamphlets, through social media, through the website, through the dawah vans. Mm -hmm. So, alhamdulillah, it's, it's all a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, but one thing that we're lacking as all nonprofit organizations are lacking are uh, volunteers mm -hmm. and people who want to, not even volunteers, people who want to be committed and dedicate some time and effort even yeah. for compensation, yeah, you know, to uh, to spread the doubt, yeah, you know, to, to, to do fundraising, to s produce new uh, dawah materials, concepts, yeah. Yeah. you know, issues that need to be addressed, mm. Mm. Uh, maybe questions and answer sessions and things like that. Having conferences for the youth, so that's another thing we do as well with the uh, Muslim community. We do conferences. Okay. One of the conferences that we did um, in Virginia at the Iqra Center okay. was we went over part of one of the compilations that I was blessed to put together, 30 Hadith for Beginners. Mashallah. Um, so that we give prizes and awards and things like that. We still haven't finished it yet. I think we went through about seven Hadith, this 30 okay. Hadith. But um, inshallah, hopefully in the future we'll be able to do that and get back to that. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, setting up conferences and things like that. But the main thing is, you know, giving the correct dawah that people will not confuse the message that we are sharing. 
Yeah. Right? Look at any of the information that we're disseminating. It's all Quran and Sunnah. It's all upon the understanding of the companions. No. Alhamdulillah. It's a, a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Another thing, Dr. Khalid, that we've been blessed to do also is publish books. Mm. You know, print down tears, but actually, you know, publish books. Some of the books um, that the, the recent books, one of them is a, a book that I was blessed to compile is um, this one, Al Kishku fi Dikr al Hadith al Ma'lul. This is more for advanced students of knowledge. Okay. Uh, talks about hidden defects in prophetic narrations. Mm. Uh, and, and the the juhd of Ahl Hadith, the mm. scholars of Hadith in preserving the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because yes. like I said, if you've never seen an Arabic manuscript, mm. you're not going to be able to appreciate or to qaddir the juhd yeah. that was actually put into you know, the process of extracting that manuscript from the yeah. darkness and bringing it mm. to light. Mm. Another one that we've been able to print is this one, uh, explanation of the hadith of Um Zara. Uh, the story of the uh, famous hadith. Um, so alhamdulillah, I mean, many times we'll post on social media, Facebook and WhatsApp, you know, that we're giving the books out for free. All people have to do is correspond with us yeah. to reach out to us. And many times when I send out boxes of Dawah materials, I'll include a couple of the, the publications as well, free of charge. Okay. Because, you know, Khalid, as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yes, said, you know, he said that, you know, one of the things that uh, benefits you after your death is knowledge that you've left behind that somebody can benefit from. So, yeah. I mean, we ask Allah that hopefully, inshallah, we get rewarded for this in the hereafter and that we're doing this for his sake alone and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our intentions and you know enable our brothers and sisters to engage in giving dawah that was one of the main goals of Ahmadi yeah because when we hear the hadith of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says khayrun laka min humra na'am and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said to Ali ibn Abi Talib, he says, if one person is guided mm. to Islam because of you, yeah. then it is better than a whole herd of red camels, which mm. is equivalent to, yeah. you know, some of the yeah. finest yeah. Bugattis, right. like well, a whole car full of Bugattis and Lamborghinis. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. If one person, now imagine, not only that, okay, mm. you get that award, but now all that person accepts Islam. And he starts praying. He starts fasting. He makes mm. hot. Mm. You're, you're participating in, in, in the reward. You're getting a, a part of that reward yeah. from that individual doing good deeds. That was the thing. And then we hear the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad where he says, yes. anni walo no. Convey on my behalf, even if it is one verse. Mm. So you don't have to be a scholar to give down. Mm. You don't have to be you know, from the Kibar ulama to give dawah. You can give dawah according to your ability. According to your Maybe ability. you don't know yes. Arabic, mm. but you memorize Surat al-Fatiha. No. You know, you just came into Islam. You can share that with your mother, share that with your brother, share that with your co-worker, share that with your Uber passenger. It might spark somebody's interest to learn more about Islam. <laughs> you may not have time to stand on the street and pass out dawah pamphlets, but you have a good job. You can finance the dawah, yeah. right? This is how the prophet look at there was the prophet Muhammad SAW in Ghazwat Tabuk when he asked the community, "Hey, we need people to 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 get the army ready. Who's going to do it? Uthman ibn Affan, right? How many camels did he give? Filled with their load, filled with the weapons, yeah. the food, and everything for them to go. Awesome. Another time when the prophet asked for charity, so fundraising, you know, fundraising. The prophet Muhammad SAW raised funds for projects." To yeah. build the community. You know, one occasion, Abu Bakr and Omar, the famous story. When Abu mm. Bakr brought, uh, you know, half of his wealth. And he says, at this day, I'll mm. do Abu Bakr. And then Abu Bakr brought all of his wealth. Allah so Akbar. Maybe you're not able to give a khutbah. Maybe you're not able to give a dars. Maybe yeah. you're not able to stand on the street. But mm. you can give $20 a month. You can give $10 a month. Mm. You can uh, fund a billboard yeah. to keep up. That every person that sees it and they accept Islam, you're going to get rewarded for that. That's how we have to think outside of the box, that dawah is not just 
restricted to the masajid. Dawah mm -hmm. is multifaceted. Yeah. Dawah can be a bumper sticker on mm -hmm. the back of your car. Worship the creator, not the creation. Mm -hmm. No? Yeah. That's the, the slogan that we have on one yeah. of the Dawah mobiles. And, you know, you hear people just, you know, repeating it. Non-Muslims. Non-Muslims yeah. will come to the food pantry and they'll be like, yeah, worship the creator, not the creation. Mm -hmm. And they'll start saying, well, Jesus, he's not the creator. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, we have to work with the Lord. Yeah. I was like, yeah, there you go, man. He believes. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it opens the, the door. door. So, yeah. th that, exactly. That's what it's about, you know, sparking the interest and then holding on to the people. So that was one of the things, too, that IMACD focuses on mm. is actually building a contact list. Anybody who comes and receives food from the food pantry and receives dawa material, we try to get their contact information, email, phone number, address then what do we do we reach out to them we send them text messages yeah hey don't forget we're giving out food this friday between yes. one and three come by get your food yeah. hey come by for this uh community dinner we're having a little lecture 10 minute lecture about islam then a dinner a free dinner for everybody hot food mm -hmm. uh, right. boom then we send them pamphlets in the mail so mm -hmm. it's not we're just you know giving them food and letting them run away no we're keeping them yeah. You know, reeling them in. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know you, you like hiking. Do you like fishing too? I, I, I love to go fishing, but I'm not a fish eater. But we can definitely do it, man. If you can come this way or I'll come your way. <laughs> so that's a little bit. And, you know, we have a website, alhamdulillah, um, www.imacd. Everything's going to be, it's going to be in the link. There's going to be okay, a link. Mashallah. It's going to be on the screen. Um, you yeah. know, Dr. Khalid, all we ask is, you know, just, Brothers and sisters, just, you know, visit the website. Visit us here in Hagerstown. Reach yeah. out to me. Uh, uh, Dr. Khalid, you can share my, uh, my, my, uh, my email. Okay. Anybody who wants free dawah materials, you know, I'll, I'll send it out ASAP. Okay. Um, and it's free of charge. And, you know, this keeps me going. This encourages me because yeah. you know, this is like my baby. You know, no, this I is thought. like our baby. Yeah. It's only two years old. We yeah. want it to grow. We want it to yeah. expand. We want to have a branch in Washington. We so want to have a love. Maybe that's what needs to happen. Yeah. We want to have a branch in North Carolina. We want yeah. to have a branch in Texas. Yeah. Because, um, you know, I'm going to die. You're going to die. We're all going to yeah. pass away. We want right. the message to keep going, the materials to keep passing out and things like this. Because mm. remember, going back to what, you know, what I had mentioned is that the more dawah we give to non-Muslims, the more of the social ills that many of the Muslim communities are experiencing get removed. The bullying from schools, yeah. the, the Islamophobia, the harassing of Muslim men and Muslim women, the, um, the lack of, of, of dawah to non-Muslims in our communities, in, in, our, in, in our masajid, you know? We mm. complement what the masajid are doing, yeah. you know? And, you know, and that's one of the, the things that it's overwhelming for an imam to, you know, I call them Superman. Yeah. You know, he's a Superman. And that's why, you know, one of the things, because I knew many of the hardships and difficulties that many imams and students of knowledge faced when they would come back to America and take those imam roles and positions. It's mm. overwhelming. Many of them, you, you, you neglect your family, yeah. your time. Um, that you spend, you know, uh, many times in the masjid is more than you spend with your family. Um, you know, and the way that many imams are treated by the administration, it's unfortunate. So that's one of the things too, that kind of, you know, uh, led me to initiating this, this organization was having my own venue and being able to control what we do and with, without, having to answer to anybody except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and, and that's one of the things that I find many of our students who are coming back now even many of the du'a today Absolutely. is uh, they're they're either restricted or from doing something or saying something which is correct yeah when the community that they're in may be doing something incorrect yeah. and you know that's why I encourage our students who are coming back now and many of your moms we need to build networks. We Absolutely. need to get the entrepreneurship. It's going to take sacrifice in the beginning. 
but you need to have some type of craft. Mm. A hirfa. And this was like a hirfa or something where you can stand on your own two feet. Because I'll tell you this, Dr. Khalid, mm. my vision in the upcoming years is that many of Masajid now, they're going to be getting rid of Imams now because of Corona. Mm. You're going to realize, well, hey, we don't need Imams now. I mean, what is the percentage now? I think the percentage of masajid in America without imams now is probably 50 to 60 percent. Wow. Wow. Many Amazing. of the issues because of political issues, you know, right. the conflict between imam and board and things like that. So many of the students of knowledge now and imams and du'a, I think they need to start establishing their own venues. We need Dawah centers. You're right. We need Dawah centers in the downtown nitty gritty areas, Baltimore. Yeah. New York City, Manhattan, Queens, mm. Brooklyn, Bronx, yeah. Newark, yeah. Seattle, mm. you know, Dallas, yeah. in the downtown, in the nitty gritty. This is where the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi started his dawah. He didn't start the dawah in a masjid, mm. which is, you know, five miles in the middle of the woods, mm. where it has no, yeah. you know, communication with anybody. He started the dawah right there in Mecca. Mm. Uh, Abu Lahab is there. Yeah. You know, Abu Sufyan is there. Hey, this is my dawah. This is the message I'm calling to. This is my supporter. And these, in my opinion, are those who need the dawah the most, the brothers and right. sisters in the inner city communities. Yeah. These are, that's why, you know, we chose Hagerstown. Many times brothers come up to me like, why are you in Hagerstown? Hmm. I'm like, I don't know how to answer. I'm like, Allah yeah. just put me here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like there's something here. Well, I'll tell you this, Dr. Khaled, there's something in my heart for this city. SubhanAllah. Like, like, and I can't explain it. Like, you know, mm. I could go to Connecticut, live close to my mother, yeah. you know, uh, because, you know, the, the Northeast, New York, New Jersey, Philly, yeah. Connecticut, more active in Dawa, more opportunities to give Dawa and things like yeah. this, but it's just something here in this city mm. that has you know, stuck me here. And I think this is what's lacking many times with a lot of our imams, a lot of our du'a, mm. is that many of us, we don't want to stick it in for the long run. You know, you find, you know, a lot of brothers hopping around from community to community to community, you know, where many times when you do that, you don't really get to build anything. Yeah. You know, you become the superstar sheikh, mm. you know, yes. <laughs> where... They see you once a month at this community or this masjid, and then that's it. So, I mean, you need to, we need to put, be boots on the ground. We need to yeah. establish ourselves in the community. Establish yourself in your locale. Yeah. You know, um, a Dawa center, you know, food pantry. Reach out to the people. Reach out to the non-Muslims. Yeah. Um, and, and let them see the side of Islam that they haven't seen from brothers who ascribe themselves to the Salafi Dawah, brothers who ascribe themselves to the Minhaj, brothers who ascribe themselves to the correct Islam. Don't yeah. just portray the image of Islam as Islam is in a masjid, yeah. and you know, my doctor is a Muslim, and that's it. Yeah. You know, be out there and be out there the people. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, he says in the Quran that, you know, that, uh, you know, that, uh, that Isa, alayhi salam, right? Yeah. And his mother, they used to eat food, right? Mm -mm -mm -mm. They eat food, and, and there's another one, uh, what, what is the verse of the Quran, where the, the prophets they would walk through the marketplaces, mm -hmm. walk through the streets. No. You know? So that's part of, you know, being out there, being visible, be a visible Muslim. Yeah. You know? But let's say you're not educated, you know, you can't give down. Leave a pamphlet. We'll give you a pamphlet. Yeah. You drive Uber all day. You drive Uber, brother, sister, yeah. 16 hours a day. You yeah. don't have time to give dawah or talk to anybody. You're making the green. <laughs> right? yeah. You're bringing in the Benjis. <laughs> <All right. Yeah. laughs> but what effort does it take to leave this yeah. in the back seat of your Uber car? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, right. And you don't even know if somebody takes it or not. They're just sitting yeah. there in the back yeah. reading it. And then the next thing you know, boom. Maybe they come to the masjid next week, they take shahada, or maybe they ask you about Islam, and you're getting that reward mm. for somebody accepting Islam from a pamphlet that you provided, or even in the workplace. That's one thing, too, that I've noticed a lot of our brothers in the, um, you know, in, in the professional field, yeah. you know, they don't want to give dawah, they're intimidated, you know, they, it's not a proper 
environment to spark a conversation about something. All right, don't spark a conversation. Leave a pamphlet in the lunchroom. Yeah. <laughs> you know, on the yeah. on the table. Like you yeah. don't know who put it there or something like yeah. that. So many ways, you know, Dr. Yeah, Khalid. You're right. You're right. Uh, we yeah. And you know, our whole goal and mission is to revive the revive the 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 the, the drive of our brothers and sisters and giving them the ability to give dawah because mm -hmm. that's our responsibility in the sight of Allah. Yeah. Everybody has to convey this religion mm. uh, in any way that yeah. they can with the correct and uh, with the correct and authentic information. Mm. So, alhamdulillah, um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to bless all of our efforts. Alhamdulillah, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you Ameen. and grant you goodness and reward for inviting us this evening to be able to discuss with you. Uh, a little bit about what we're doing yeah and i look forward to definitely working together with you and um the organizations that you work with and the communities that you work with out in washington and all over america yeah we need to, uh we're way behind you know we're yeah. way behind we have a lot of work to do so uh you know may allah bless you and reward you yeah. dr Fadid, and uh, appreciate for yeah. Appreciate you inviting me this evening and uh Jazakallah Khair Barakallah Fika probably took up a lot of the time. We probably went no, you, over go under. you really you really inspired me, Aku, no doubt. Now. You inspired me and uh really you can't even imagine the spark you've lit in me. So I need to keep that fire on <laughs> that fire lit, really that this is where we need to be doing. So it's been a pleasure having you here, Aki, and I look forward to us having many more Bi'idnillah Ta'ala sittings hopefully in the very new, near future, actually, inshallah, in the very near future. Definitely, and definitely. May Allah bless you. So uh, it'll be your link and your email will be in the, uh, in the uh, description box. Also, it'll, it'll be very present in this video because that's one of the things we wanted to, uh, to really promote that, which is khair, and, and may Allah bless us to have this ta'awan. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, Barakallah Feek, Sheikh, Barakallah Feek. Inshallah, we'll be in touch, Inshallah Ta'ala. Allahu Ilik. Akhala Khayyan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.